You are now listening to the Bayshore Community Church Podcast. Our mission is to connect to God, connect to people, and to serve the community. Thank you for joining us today and wherever you are listening. We hope that this message inspires you, encourages you, and transforms you. Our prayer is that this is just the beginning of a conversation between you and Jesus. Enjoy the message. Hey, uh, I'll be offended right now if you all don't show me how excited you are to be in the basement today. Anybody excited? People in the back. Are you, Akiki, you excited back there? I love it. Akiki in the back. Hey, Peter, speaking of people in the back, um, can we just show some love to our volunteers who run the booth in the back right there? We have George and Leanne and Amy and Ned, we got the whole crew back there. They're heroes because they do, they do the lights and the, the sound. They're the ones who put the lyrics on the screen. And you all still make up words. I'm pretty sure behind me today, I heard watermelon in that last song. I'm like, I don't think that's right. Uh, appreciate you all. And um, it wouldn't be right if we didn't also show some love to our online family. So what's up, Spotify, YouTube? I want to say um, hey to Miss Jackie on Facebook. And so we have a picture of Miss Jackie I think we'll put on the screen. This is Miss Jackie. Everybody say, hey, Miss Jackie. Hey, Jackie. Everybody say, Go Ravens. I tricked some of y'all. You're like, just saying it. <laughs> Look, Miss Jackie had the Ravens thing on. Anyway, um, this is Sean's mom. And I've known Miss Jackie ever since elementary school um, because she would drop her son, Sean, off to her house. Which, Sean, that was, like, that was like 30 years ago. We are old. Golly. Anyway, so Miss Jackie isn't able to be in the building, so she watches every single week on Facebook. And so Miss Jackie... Thanks for watching. I hope you have the best day ever. We're gl- so glad you're with us. And, um, and for the rest of you all, we're going to have a great day. Because we're starting a brand new... There we go. Kiki's happy about it. We're going to have a great day because we're starting this brand new series called I'm Offended. And so I thought to start, what we could all do is you just turn to the person next to you and tell them the most offensive thing you can think of. No, I'm just kidding. Don't. <laughs> Some of you are like, wow, this is going to... That would be the worst way to start this message. Um, but let me, let me start out this way. Um, I, I wonder how many of you all would be offended if I, if I told you, if I admitted that sometimes, every once in a while, I eat at McDonald's. Come on, come on, listen. Where, where am I healthy eating, hummus, snorting, haven't had a preservatives since Rocky IV came out. And how many of you are like, no, nah, I don't eat McDonald's. I don't do it. Come on, let me see your hands. Let me see your hands. Not at all. You self-righteous people. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, you know what I've noticed? People don't like to admit they eat at McDonald's, but statistically, you do. You, that's, the stats are not in your favor. Do you know that 85% of people eat McDonald's every single year? <laughs> now, some of you, like John here, is like, not me. I'm part of the 15%. No, you're not. You got a, you got a McMuffin hanging out of your pocket. And so I've noticed that people don't like to admit they eat at McDonald's. That's why everybody in the drive-thru, you know, we got like our hoodies up, <laughs> sunglasses on. You're like, you haven't worn a face mask since like 2021, but you're like looking in the glove box and like putting the face mask on. <laughs> Nobody wants to admit it, all right? So I'm just going to go ahead and admit it. Every once in a while, I eat at McDonald's. And so here, here's what happened. Um, I did, like two weeks ago, I went to the Bethany McDonald's. And true story, this is what happened. The, the drive through line was out on the Route 1, which is weird because nobody eats there. <laughs> but it was out on the Route 1. And I, I don't know if you're like me. I, I, I'm an impatient person. Like whenever Netflix buffers for one second, I'm like, come on. <laughs> And so, like, I wasn't about to stay in that line. And so there were three open parking spots in front of the McDonald's. So how many open parking spots were there? Three. Remember that. That's important. So I pull in, and I pull in, and I'm starting to park into one of those parking spots. As I'm parking in one of the three parking spots, this lady comes around the corner from the other side in her vehicle. Now, let me just set this up. She's twice as far away from the parking spot that I'm pulling into as I am. No blinker on at all, and her license plate said New York. <laughs> just random detail. I did that unimportant, but just putting that out there. I'm already 
already in the parking spot, so I continue to park my car. And out of my rear, or out of my little side mirror, I see she pulls right behind me and parks her car, puts her window down, and gives me a New York stare. Like, <laughs> now, listen, I just want to go in there without anybody seeing me. That's all I'm trying to do, all right? And so I get out of my car, and Lady New York, we'll call her that, she was like, hey, 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 I see you. She was like, oh, that was real polite. Now, listen, I'm not trying to have a fight. I'm just trying to get some cholesterol. I'm real close. And, and I'm confused, okay? And I'm confused because how many parking spots are left? Welcome to Bay Shore. If this is your first time, that just, that's who we are. There's two spots left. I took one, okay? <laughs> anyway, there's two spots left. And so I'm confused. And I said, I just said ma'am, is, it, what, what, is everything okay? And she said, you stole my parking spot. <laughs> and I'm thinking, there's two other ones. And so I'm like, ma'am, Karen. <laughs> Sorry. Karen Trilly is like, I hate that. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so so uh, there's already two other spots. I'm like, ma'am, I I will I will like air traffic control you into the spot. I'm, I'm like, I will, lady, New York, I will get you in this spot. And she just looked at me like I was the greatest disappointment in her life. <laughs> and so she and she left. She never even went. To, she left. I think she goes straight back to New York, which is okay. <laughs> But she was so disappointed. And I'm thinking, like, listen, if you want to be disappointed, just go into McDonald's with me. <laughs> we'll both be disappointed together, okay? Like, but, and she was so offended at what I did and just, like, reamed me out that I got offended at her. Right. Is that what happened to you? Yes. Now, I wasn't too offended. I still got my cheeseburger, and it was still disappointing, all right? But have you noticed in 2022, everyone is so easily offended about everything? Have you noticed this? Oh my gosh, like, I don't want to offend you, but our generation is the most offended generation of all the generations. Now, not me. I don't get offended. I am above it. I'm a man of the cloth. I have thick skin. Listen, I don't get easily offended just as long as you don't talk bad about my wife or my kids or steal my parking spot or criticize my message or my outfit or leave us a one-star Google review on Google or order your steak well done, you know, or criticize Taylor Swift music. You know, as long as you don't do those, or, or, you know, as long as you don't do those things, as long as you don't do those things, then I'm, go I'm good. I'm good. No, right, listen, I get offended. We all get offended, all right? And, and so we're all easily offended. Now, I miss the good old days of being offended. You remember the good old days of being offended? When we used to be offended by, like, somebody parking, like, over two spots in the grocery store parking lot? Man, I miss those days. Yeah, this is, yeah. I, I miss being offended by things like someone who thought their cat was better than a dog. Or like weirdos who, you know, have no taste buds and choose Pepsi over Coke or put pineapple on pizza. I, I miss the days of like, you know, people, you know, getting offended or someone talking in a movie. Hello. Or a big sinner who calls Lewis Delaware, lose Delaware. <laughs> Who's heard, who's heard that? Lose Delaware. Who said it? No, just kidding. Don't put your hand. Sinner. Okay. Listen, those, those were the good old days of being offended. I miss those days because nowadays we're just offended about every stinking thing. So I'm going to say some things and nobody say anything. This is shh, shh. Okay. So here's the things we get offended by. Now, vax, no vax. Mask, 
No mask. It's all the Democrats' fault. No, no, no. It's all the Republicans' fault. Kneel during the national anthem. No, no. Stand during the national anthem. Take the guns. Give the guns. Cancel them. Don't cancel them. It's not okay to drink if you're a Christian. Yeah, it is because Jesus made wine. I'm just, no, I'm just putting all the different sides. You all seem tense right now. Can I tell a joke? Can I tell a joke? Yeah. Okay, because I may break this up. What's the difference between two Baptists and two Presbyterians that go into a liquor store? The two Presbyterians say hi to each other. Some of you are like, I don't get it, or I'm offended. I'm offended. Look, here's the point. We all get offended. That's the point. Like, we all constantly are offended. And did you know we all have a hot button issue? I just hit some of yours right then. I wasn't choosing a side. I was just saying the two sides. You're like, I think I know what he's thinking. Okay, you don't know. But we all have a hot button issue. And if somebody isn't, like, offended by your hot button issue, you get offended right because you got so we got to do something about this it's not right and all my facebook friends agree with me and if you don't unfollow unfollow cancel 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 i pray hemorrhoids on you in jesus name am i the one who prays that it's just me it's just me probably i don't know some of you are like i wish nate would speak again or like this is he at least had funny videos this is i don't know um but listen, everyone is so easily offended all the time. And, and I don't know if you know this, but that's not the Jesus way. Can, can I show you what Jesus' half-brother James said? Let, let, let me show you. This is uh, James chapter 1, verse 19. He said, everyone. Everybody turn to the person next to you and say, you're an everyone. <laughs> everyone, okay. Everyone, get this, this is so crazy. Should be quick to listen. What? Slow to speak. What? Slow to become angry. Oh, I would be slow to become angry if the person in front of me wasn't driving so slow through lose Delaware. <laughs> they're evil. Or they're an idiot. Or they're an evil idiot. <laughs> but he says, no, so just slow it down, cowboy. Slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Everybody say righteousness. Righteousness. Because that's what triggers some of you. Some of you are like, oh, I love that word righteousness because, oh, pastor, I can be angry because I got righteous anger. Everybody say righteous anger. Righteous. Yes, Christian loophole. Those are the best. <laughs> Listen, have you noticed that our righteous anger is always over issues and sins that are not our issues or sins? Have you noticed that? Like we have, we're like, we have righteous anger over this issue or that issue, but it's their sin. We're never have, we never have righteous anger over our, our issue or our sin. Isn't this true? And so uh, like years ago, I used to have this neighbor and, um, and she was never home. I think I mentioned this before. I had a neighbor who was never home and I didn't know why. And so I just imagined this whole story in my mind. I, I figured that she was like this high level criminal that got caught. And she went to trial, and it was a big trial, like bigger than Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Big trial. <laughs> she got convicted, okay? And she went to maximum prison, whatever, with a life sentence, all right? So I just, that was what I, that's why she wasn't home. That's what I imagined in my mind. Then one day, I'm just like cutting my grass, and I see her, and I'm like, kids, go inside. She's out. <laughs> and then she like weighs me over, and I'm like, now, I don't know if this surprises you or not, but I don't feel like I'm cut out for prison. <laughs> like, I feel threatened in the dentist's office, okay? So I don't, I'm not sure. But she's, like, telling me to come over, and she's, like, I'm a little scared of her, and I don't want, you know, maybe she's a serial killer. I, I don't know. So I, I go over to her. First interaction I ever had with her, and she said, don't get your grass clippings in my yard. And I was like, she said, yard? Like prison yard. She is a fugitive. <laughs> Anyway, first interaction I ever had with her, I go in, I'm like, Stacy, I talked to the neighbor, and she was talking about, don't get the grass clippings in her yard, nah, 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 what she care about her yard? Looks like the before picture of a Scott's commercial or whatever, like, ah, ah. <laughs> And I thought, like, I would never say something like that about my yard. The next day, 
Another neighbor's like walking their dog by my yard. And their dog walks in my yard, lifts up his leg, and starts irrigating my lawn. And I'm like, Stacy, look, look, look at this. Somebody's letting their dog pee in her. I don't need some dog whizzing all over our lawn. <laughs> and she's like, you sound like prison Karen over there, okay? I'm like, I don't appreciate that comparison, okay? But I'm, I'm probably the only one, but my righteous anger is always over their issue and their sin. Is it, is it just me? No, it's all of us. And it's so easy to be like, oh, but they cussed. But we don't see our own pride. Or they're an alcoholic. You don't see that you're a foodaholic? I'm going to need security to escort me to my car today. All right, I can... I just already feel it, all right? I got you. The, the, I don't know where that came from, but let, 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 me, just, let me just speak for my, myself, myself. Nine out of ten times, my anger isn't righteous anger. Nine out of ten times, my anger is self-righteous anger. And so that's kind of what happens with a lot of us with, with anger. And so since we're talking about anger, I, I have this question to put on the screen. How effective is your anger? How's it going for you? Is it working out? Are, are your friends coming to you saying, oh man, your anger made me, I saw the lies. <laughs> Is your anger giving you the joy, 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 joy down in your heart? Yeah. Where? There it is. Where is it? I don't know. But everybody, everybody say this with me. It's not working. It's not working. It's not working. And, and maybe you're like me. I'm kind of like, but I like my anger. It's, it's fun. It makes me happy, kind of. I mean, isn't that weird? Like, we kind of, like, it's, it's nice. And, and listen, anger is kind of fun, but it's hardly ever effective. And I, I don't know about you, but I want to make a difference more than I want to make a point. Let me say that again, because somebody might need to write that down and remember that. I want to make a difference more than I want to make a point. One, one day, there was this guy who was like a, um, a law expert, and he comes up to Jesus, and he's like, Jesus, I'm real busy with law stuff. So, and I paraphrase the Bible, if, if you haven't noticed. Um, but he's like, could you like sum everything up in a sentence or two? And Jesus is like, well, you, you want the Cliff Notes version of the Bible? The Bible's not even written yet. You want the Cliff Notes version? Okay, gotcha. All right, so this is what Jesus says this is all about. This is what he says in Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. He said, it's all about this. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And then the second is like it. Now, we're going to read this all together on three. One, two, three. Love your neighbor as yourself. Now, you might be like, wait, wait, wait. Jesus, have you met my neighbor? Have you seen the bumper stickers on their car? Do you know what news network they watch? Jesus is like, no, 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 listen. Just love your neighbor as yourself. Now, I wish Jesus said, call them out. Pray flat tires and hemorrhoids on them in Jesus' name. <laughs> Some of you can start using that. I don't need to plant these bad seeds. But listen, instead, Jesus said, if you want to make a difference more than a point, love me and love them. Love me and love them. All right, now, you might be like, well, okay, well, I guess you don't have any opinions, Pastor Joel. <laughs> oh, I got opinions, and they're all right. <laughs> It's so wild. I don't know. <laughs> but for me, I want to make a difference more than I'll make a point. And so how do we do this? I have two tips so that you can become unoffendable or at least start to become unoffendable. And if you're an English teacher, you're like, unoffendable, that's not even a real word. And it's not. <laughs> I made it up. Okay. But don't get offended. All right. So how do we become unoffendable or more unoffendable? The first idea is this, is to lower your expectations of others. Lower the bar. Lower your expectations of others. So um, the other day, my family were riding down the road. Everybody's in the car. Me and Stacey are talking. I don't, I don't remember what, about what. Probably that we were offended by something someone said. I don't know. <laughs> and out of the back of the car, my eight-year-old daughter it was like, Mommy and Daddy, what videos did you watch on YouTube when you were kids? Me and Stacey, we were born in the 1980s, okay? We didn't have YouTube. We had lawn darts. 
<laughs> in the 80s, like, it was, it was considered a great gift to give an eight-year-old a wood-burning kit. Like, that's, that's what we had. And so Nora's like, well, what kind of videos did you watch on YouTube when you were kids? And I'm looking at Stacey like, um, Nora, YouTube didn't exist when we were kids. Now, Nora was then, like, so confused. And she's like, well, then, what videos did you watch on the Internet? I'm like, honey, no, no, we grew up in a single wide trailer. We did not have an internet. We had a kerosene heater. And we sucked in all the smoke. Okay, it's a wonder I'm even alive right now. And Nora said, you were alive in the 1900s? I was like, I don't appreciate how you asked that question. But I'm curious, how many of you are around in the 1900s? You remember kerosene heaters. So let me see. This is why our lifespan is a little bit down, all right? Um, listen, in the 1900s, you know what we did when we were bored? We played board games. Come on, who played Monopoly back in the day? You played some Monopoly? Woo! And anybody play, um, you know, Checkers, Battleship, Life, my personal favorite, Mouse, Tribe? Come on, who played any of these games? What about this one? Anybody play Perfection? Some of you just had a nostalgic moment like, oh, Perfection. Listen, I hated Perfection. This game stressed me out. How many of you play Perfection? Listen, this gave me a heart attack every single time I played. I would rather be in charge of the nuclear code of the United States of America... And maybe some of you don't know how this game works, okay? So you, you turn this dial, and it gives you like 0.7 seconds to get all these little baby-sized shapes into the, the only baby-sized shaped hole that they fit in, and you got to do that before the buzzer goes off, which never happens, okay? And so the buzzer goes off. They go all over the place. You have a heart attack. Your family looks at you and calls you a loser. This is the 1900s. <laughs> Stupid game, okay? I do not like this game. <laughs> now, ha- hang with me. This is a mess. All the OCD people like me are like, uh. uh, uh. <laughs> but I, I think we play the perfection game with people. Well, we're like, okay, oh, you're my friend because, oh, this is my hardest shape. I hate this shape. Cause there's... <laughs> Just imagine... Oh, there it goes. Okay, you're my friend because you think the same way I think on this thing. Okay, you, you, you wear the same clothes as I wear. Okay, you're my friend because, you know, I don't, that one just fell out. I don't know. You, you think the same thing. You guys don't have to. Just leave it down. They're fine. Just put them down. Put them down. Put them down. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, make it a mess. Okay. But we, get, we start filling in our friends and we try to make them perfect. Okay, and as long as everything fits perfect, we're good. But then if you're like... Okay, last, last piece. Okay, we're friends. Wait, you voted for who? You stupid, stupid person. You for, no, all gone. Okay, you, you, we're done. And if somebody misses one piece of the pie, one piece of the perfection, stupid person, right? Oh, no, you, you didn't invite me to the shower? Stupid person. You forgot my birthday? Stupid, stupid person. You didn't text me back. Okay, I know you got my text because I saw the bubbles. The bubbles were there, and the bubbles disappeared. (laughs) And I hate to tell you this, but you are not the picture of perfection either. You know, like, we, we don't always get things right. And so before you're like, well, I can't believe they, and I would never, and they can't be a Christian if they did this. No, 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 no. Listen, remember this. Sinners do sinful things. Sinners do sinful things. And so maybe we lower our expectations of others, and we don't get so shocked and surprised when somebody else isn't perfect. Because do you know how um, uh, Paul said we would all kind of be like around, I don't know, 2022? You know what he said? He didn't say 2022, but he said in the future down the road, this is what people are going to be like. This is what he said in 2 Timothy 3, verse 2 through 4. He said, people will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, 
disobedient to their parents. Come on, parents, give me an amen. amen. Ungrateful. Those go together, right? Ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now, some of you are like, that is the most moving and beautiful list of my coworkers. <laughs> Did they put you up to this? Listen, sinners, which we all are, sinners do sinful things. If they're not Jesus, they're not perfect. People will let you down. I will let you down. I, I'm going to do a pastor confession right now. I'm going to let you all down. You ready for it? You already got mad at me earlier. I didn't even say anything. I just said both. Anyway, it's all good. I'm going to get emails on that. You know, all right, you can always email me at cotter at baseshirt.com, okay? <laughs> but let me pastor confess to you. I don't cuss out loud. <laughs> but my wife will tell you that I cuss in my head, and I, I do sometimes. And listen, she knows every single time. She's in my head, you guys. I, we've been together for 20 years. This is, how many of you men know where you're at, like when you get to the 20 year mark and you're like, you're, they know what you're thinking. How many of you there? Some of you are like, I, I, I'm there, but I know what she's thinking. And she's like, don't raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> the other day we're riding down the road. Okay. And we're on Fred Hutchinson road. And this guy like goes around us, just like crazy around us at the intersection. And I got my whole, all my family in the car. And so I beat the horn at him. You know, just to remind, remind them that Jesus loves them and all. <laughs> and Stacy's like, Joel, stop it. And I'm like, I didn't do anything. I just beeped the horn for the safety of our family. I was like, it's not like I said anything bad. And she's like, yeah, but you thought it. <laughs> she's like, you thought, beep. And I thought, how the beep did she know that? <laughs> Listen. <laughs> I hate to disappoint you, but I am not perfect. I am not perfect. You follow me around long enough, you're going to be like, oh, I'm disappointed with that guy, okay? And, and, and if that ever happens, if I do something, which will happen, okay, and I disappoint you, please don't say that God's not real and the church betrayed you. Because God is real and the church didn't betray you, but a sinful person wasn't perfect just like you're not perfect. And so... We, what do we do? We lower our expectations of others. Maybe we don't get so shocked when somebody isn't the picture of perfection. You know that Jesus was never shocked over somebody's sin in the Bible? Never. Okay, like, like there was this one girl, um, and she, she had five ex-husbands. She had enough ex-husbands to have a basketball team of divorced men. That's a lot. Man. And, and she wasn't done yet. She's like, I need somebody for the bench. I need number six, baby. And so she got, she was with number six, okay? And so, and listen, they were doing more than playing basketball. Her and number six. And so one day she comes to the well. And guess who's at the well? Jesus, Jesus okay? And Jesus didn't go, ah! You sinful, si oh! <laughs> what, Jesus? I'm just here to get a drink because I'm thirsty. Oh, we know you're thirsty. <laughs> oh, we know. I can't wait to go back and tell James and John about this. You know, oh, I'm going to tell them all about you. And I'm going to say in a prayer request so it's not gossip. <laughs> Listen, Jesus didn't do that. Jesus wasn't shocked. He wasn't surprised. He didn't write on his Facebook like, I met the evil woman at the well today. He didn't do that. What he did is he offered this woman living water because he wanted to make a difference more than he wanted to make a point. And if Jesus wasn't shocked by her sin and my sin and your sin and our sin, then maybe we shouldn't be so surprised when other people aren't perfect. And so my personal goal is to start lowering my expectations of others. Because that sounds a whole lot better than being offended all the time. Any, anybody with me? Amen. Okay, last idea is this. Number one is lower your expectations of others. The other one is this. Raise your gratitude for God's grace. Raise your gratitude for God's grace. Now, um, I, I have a question. And the way you answer this question will tell me everything I need to know about you. How many of you here have never, ever, 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 ever gotten a traffic ticket? You have a perfect driving record. You are Jesus in a Kia. 
Come on, raise your hand. You're, you're, look at this. All right. One day in the future, raise your hand again. In the future, we want to get golf carts in the parking lot to shuttle people. You're our drivers, okay? We are not going to let Butch drive, okay? So... Now, if you have ever gotten a traffic ticket, just give me a woo! Woo! Yeah, listen, our car insurance premiums may be higher, but we got there five minutes earlier than the, these people. Listen, I'm, I'm part of the exclusive club that gets the ticket every single time. Like, I have never not gotten the ticket. Who, who's in this club? Let me, let me see your hands. Oh, basically all the men except for Carrie. Okay, um... Listen, the first time I ever got pulled over, I was driving through Ocean City, and uh, I was on my way to a friend's dad's funeral. And I'm late. And so I'm going 45 in a 35, and I get pulled over. And so it was the first time I ever got pulled over, so I was like, sir, I'm so sorry. I'm on my way to my friend's funeral, like, and I'm late. Would you just maybe give me a warning? He's like, that would be $147.50. Right. <laughs> it's like, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. And, Listen, I'm, I'm a really tame driver. My wife calls me driving Miss Daisy, all right? I don't go over 55 unless it's an emergency. I, that's just, I'm that guy. But if I am going to get pulled over, even if it's on the way to the funeral, 100% of the time, I'm getting a ticket. My wife, 50-50 shot. Maybe 40-60 shot. I, I think the odds are in her favor. Come on. Anybody know what I'm talking about? The men, the men, some of you know what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm not saying Stacey doesn't get a ticket because she's a female, but I'm thinking it a little bit. <laughs> and listen, I love our police officers. I love, you know, our law enforcement, but I would, I would really like to break a traffic law one time and not get a ticket. Like I would love to speed one time or make a wrong turn one time or break check a New Jersey person one time. And not get like an aggressive driving ticket. <laughs> Look, my, my point is this. I have deserved every ticket I've gotten. And Stacy has deserved every ticket she has not gotten. <laughs> but let me see this. I asked who's, already, who's gotten a ticket. How many of you have ever broken a traffic law? Ticket or not, you broke a traffic law. Raise your spouse's hand. Everybody should raise their hand right now. <laughs> Hands down. How many broke a traffic law on the way to church today? These are all the people who drove to church today. The rest of them, you were riding along with them, right? All right, last question. And I don't have, you don't have to raise your hand. Just give me a little, little one of these. Give me, a, give me an S, a hand S, if you've ever broken God's law. If you've ever sinned. Come on, let me, let me see. Let me see. Okay. This, this... That, that section, their, their hand gestures were sinful. Okay, so it works. All right, this section is not going to be with me, apparently. But listen, just like we all break traffic laws, we all break God's laws. Just like we break traffic laws, we all break God's laws. Maybe for you, you cheated or um, you envied or you gossiped or you lied, or you lusted, or you farted in an elevator. <laughs> Some of you are like, I don't think that's a sin. Have you ever been in an elevator? <laughs> I would say that's a sin. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, we've all broken God's laws. We, we all deserve the fine. But when you accept Jesus, Jesus is like, Officer Jesus comes up to your window and is like, hey, you, you can go away free. I, pay, I paid the ticket. Guys, Jesus paid it all. It's his grace. It's not our perfection. It's his perfection. Is anybody grateful for that? It's him. It's his grace. And I want, I want to show you what Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says. This is, this is so good. It says, for it is by grace that you have been saved through faith. It's by grace that you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves, okay? Because, you know, you got the ticket, you broke the traffic law, you broke God's law. It's not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works so that no one 
can boast. It's by grace. It's by grace. It's by grace. It's by grace. It is by grace. And I kind of picture it this way. You know, I, I see Jesus, you know, walking around with a perfection game and walking around with before he went on the cross. And I, I feel like I imagine him like picking up all of our stuff, all of our stuff that's all over the ground. I got, got this. This is this was spring break, 1987. You remember that one? <laughs> oh, got got this one. <laughs> this was last night. <laughs> oh, this was oh Hudson Fields, Jimmy Allen concert. <laughs> well, I didn't do anything wrong there. Yeah, you were passed out in the porta potty. Okay, so. <laughs> We'll just pick up all this. We'll call the rest of this college. Okay. I kind of imagine Jesus going up on the cross, and he's holding all of our imperfections, all of them, so that when God sees us, he doesn't see our imperfections. He sees the perfection of Jesus. It's his grace. It's his goodness, not by our goodness. It's his goodness. And he offers us, offers me the same grace that he offers all of us. And so I just think as I walk through this message this week, I just thought, you know, it's so easy to be like, you know, but, but they, but they hurt me. Well, you know what? I've hurt people too, you know, or they cussed. Well, I cuss in my head sometimes. Or they, you know, didn't keep the promise. Well, I don't always keep my promise either. And I'm going to quit listing off my sins because then eventually you all will leave the church. (laughs) But they need our grace just like we need God's grace. Other people need our grace just like we need God's grace. And we're not always as innocent as we think we are. I started out that story um, about McDonald's and the, the lady being offended, you know, because I parked in her spot. And nah, 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 nah. I got offended that she was offended and all that. And I didn't tell you the whole story uh, because I, I was able in that parking lot to calm down and let my anger be slow and invite this lady to church. And I said, next time you're in town, you know, I'm sorry, would, would, would you maybe come visit me at my church? And oddly enough, she's um, in town this weekend. And she decided to come to church, and she's in the... No, I'm just kidding. All that was made up. (laughs) Some of you are like, man, he's such a good guy. Wait. (laughs) No, but here's, here's what I wanted to say. I walked out of that McDonald's, and I was still offended. I was like, how could she? And how'd she get through life this way? And blah, 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 all this anger. Blah, blah. And I'm at the scene of the crime. I'm where we kind of like had this like back and forth. And I look down and in the McDonald's parking lot, there is a, a traffic flow arrow. And it was pointed this way. And I had driven in this way. So I'm looking for the other arrow. So maybe it's like a two way. <laughs> There's no other arrow. There's one way. I went the wrong way down a one way. And the reason she was upset is because she went all the way around the building and she was ready for that parking spot. She saw it when she pulled in. (coughs) You're not always as innocent as you think you are. And they need God's grace or they need our grace just like we need God's grace. I'll end with this. Got this. Got this rock here. And I want you to imagine that this rock is your hot button issue. This is what makes you offended. This is what makes your blood boil. This is, this is that thing like vax, no vax, mask, no mask, whatever it is. You know, this is your hot button issue. And maybe it's way more personal than those other things I kind of rattled off. But this is, this is it. You hold, we hold on to these things. And I don't know about you, but I, I enjoy holding on to my rock. I like it. Because if the person who offended me gets near me, right. whew, come on. Steelers fans, come on. <laughs> I like this rock. But I think this rock is um, kind of interesting because there's a story in the Bible where Jesus walked up on a scene, kind of like me holding on to this rock. And what had happened is um, this woman was with uh, somebody who was not her husband. And 
they were together. So she got caught in the act of adultery. And so these men grabbed, I don't know how all the situation works, but they grabbed this woman and they pulled her out into the street. And all these men surrounded her and they were holding rocks. And they're like, how kid could you? And I know your husband, John, and that's terrible. And you're a sinner and you deserve death. And they're all about to kill this woman. And then in drops Jesus. And Jesus stands between her and them. And it says that he, he stoops down and he starts drawing to the sand. In my mind, he's figuratively what he's doing. He's, he's picking up her imperfections. You know, I, yep, I, I know what you did. All right, I remember that. I, rem- I know what you're doing right now. I know all this stuff. And he picks up her imperfections and he stands up. And he's standing between her and the people who are about to stone her. And he's holding her imperfections and they're holding a stone. And he says, you want to you give her what she deserves? You want to get even? You want to you kill her because that's what the law says she deserves? Then he said, if you are without sin, throw the stone. Throw it. And they all dropped their stone and they walked away. And listen, I don't know what angers you. I don't know what offends you. I don't know what your hot button issue is. I don't know what it is, but I know we all got a stone. We all got something that bothers us. And I'm, I'm on your side. I think you're right. I choose to agree with you. But being angry never, ever makes things all right. It never really works. It's not very effective. And so maybe you're like me, and you want to make a difference more than you make it, want to make a point. So what do we do? When we walk out of here, we lower our expectations of others, and we raise our gratitude for God's grace. Because if Jesus wouldn't hold on to our stone, our offenses, then maybe we should drop the offenses that we're holding on to. Because Jesus didn't call us to be right. He called us to be loving. He didn't call us to make a point. He called us to make a difference. Jesus, Jesus, listen, um, it's my goal as your pastor. My goal as your pastor isn't to get you to believe what I believe on some like political issue or whatever. My goal as your pastor is to get you to see the love of the one who changed my life, and that is Jesus. And so we lower our expectations of others, and we raise our gratitude for God's grace because everyone around us is so easily offended all the time, and we're called to be different. Let me pray for you guys. Jesus, I'm so thankful for um, your words in this because I feel like sometimes we get so comfortable holding on to the rock. It's so easy, and there's, there's justifications, and then a lot of times we're right. So why not hold on to that stone? And so, God, it's comforting sometimes to hold on to a stone. But you really framed it when you said, whoever is without sin, throw the first stone. So God, I just pray that we'll remember that. And, and our expectations of others, not that we give them you know, a reason to walk all over us, but we'll lower our expectations of, of others because you're the only one who's perfect. And give us a gratitude for your grace. Your grace is so amazing. And you've given us grace so that we can share grace with other people. And God, I know this is, hits home in some ways. It's kind of superficial to others. For some of you, this is really, really difficult. And so God, I just pray that you'll give us the the courage we need to kind of work through this and walk through this so that we're not walking through life constantly offended because the person who gets hurt the most when we're constantly offended is ourselves. And so God, because you gave us grace, we are going to give grace to other people. And Lord, we're so thankful that you're going to help us through that. And if you agree with this, everybody just say amen. Thank you so much for joining us on the Bayshore podcast. I want to encourage you to take this message you just received and allow it to go deep into your soul and let Jesus do the deep work that only he can do. A special thanks to everyone that gives generously to Bayshore. It's because of you that this ministry is possible, creating life change all over the world. You can be a part of spreading the message around the world by going to bayshore.online and clicking give. For all things Bayshore, visit bayshore.online to find out what your next step may be. You can subscribe right here and share this podcast with your friends and family. Thank you again for listening. God bless you.